dementia researcher with a blog and a rating. Hello there. My name is Ajantha Abe. I am a PhD student at the University of Oxford, and today I'm reading my blog post on why you should teach alongside your research, especially as a PhD student. Among researchers, teaching is often seen as a burden, a necessary yoke to supply the academic beast that restrains your important experimental work and mires your time with marking. However, I believe teaching can be wonderful, a vital part of the experience and process of science, something that can help your research and help you become a better researcher. In this article, I want to try and make the case for why you should absolutely try doing some teaching, especially if you're a student yourself. Teaching in the university context can take several different forms, from being a teaching assistant and demonstrating in labs, to being a tutor and assisting students in small group settings, all the way to lecturing larger audiences. You can start small, especially if you're new to it, But teaching as a postgrad student can be quite intimidating though. Do you know enough? Are you qualified enough? In some ways, I would argue you're actually far better qualified to be teaching than some of the more senior academics. After all, you were very recently right in the the shoes of the student and remember all too well what was really hard, what was really easy and how best to learn the material and how to approach classes. You can empathise and develop a rapport with students much more easily, and from their perspective, you're often much less intimidating to talk to and ask questions to. Nevertheless, there can be a strong feeling of imposter syndrome when teaching as a postgrad, especially the terror of being caught out not knowing some part of the content you're teaching. Usually, this can be turned into an opportunity to demonstrate the research process and show that it's okay to not know everything. But beyond this, the quote-unquote illusion of explanatory depth is a rarely used term for a phenomenon that's quite widely apparent. This is the idea of feeling like, feeling like you know something or how to explain something, but as soon as someone actually asks you to explain it, you realise that you knew far less about it than you thought. Teaching makes you aware of this, and you can embrace it. It's a good thing. It forces you to raise your game, to make sure you know what you're talking about and really understand your topic. It's often said that the best way to learn something is to teach it. This past year, I've had the opportunity to conduct tutorials, so small group teaching where students write an essay on a set topic beforehand and come to discuss their essays on the topic. I do tutorials on cellular pathways leading to neurogeneration, which helpfully is the same topic as my PhD project. And not only has setting papers to read for my students forced me to actually read some more papers myself, but it also pushes me to make sure I really understand what those papers are talking about and think critically about them. The feeling of obligation I have to demonstrate thoughtful criticism keeps me honest, and I feel like I'm learning just as much from teaching as when I was in the position of the learner. It's certainly helped me gain a better understanding of my topic in completely new ways as I try to find analogies to explain concepts to different students. And I've really enjoyed having back and forth discussions with students who push back on my preconceptions and bring their own perspectives. Teaching has even inspired me to come up with new research ideas. Some years ago, while working on tau pathology in the brains of dogs with dementia, I was demonstrating in an undergraduate neuroanatomy lab and showing some students the anatomy of the Hupes circuit, which is a limbic pathway. And so in the middle of this demonstration, it occurred to me that the brain regions I was pointing out, the hippocampus, alveus, fornix, thalamus, etc., these all matched many of the places that I was seeing tau pathology in the brain's tissue of the, that I was studying in the lab. And so as soon as the session was over, I ran back to the lab, I checked my images to confirm the tau I was seeing in the thalamus was in fact in the part linked to the Hupes circuit. And then I planned a series of experiments to test whether other brain regions that made up the circuit Uh, were also affected, and lo and behold, they were. And this idea that was sparked while teaching neuroanatomy to undergrads became the key idea behind my first first author paper. Teaching can not just help you with the research though, it can also help you become a better researcher. A key part of science is after all communication, and being able to clearly articulate your ideas and explain complicated concepts in easy to understand ways And working out different ways to frame topics are all essential skills in communicating your research, and teaching is a great way to practice this. As alluded to before, teaching forces you to break through the illusion of explanatory depth and challenges your own understanding. 
It forces you to think critically about what you know and empathetically about what others understand and how to bridge that gap. There are, of course, other benefits to teaching. It can make a nice break from the routine nature of lab work, a way to get on your feet and out of the office. A notable advantage as a student is earning a bit of extra money, but teaching can also earn other dividends, including getting to know other researchers and academics in the department, helping you network within the institution, and build up a pool of people from whom you might eventually be able to ask references from. It doesn't hurt to have it on the CV either. This all misses the real point though, which is that teaching isn't just useful for you personally, but is also essential for science, and even further, it's just kind of wonderful in itself. Training the next generation and cultivating new ideas is vital for the future of dementia research and science more broadly. We're not going to solve the big issues without more hands on deck. And if nothing else, teaching is a great recruitment avenue from your lab. We were all students once, maybe you still are, and know the influence a great teacher or mentor can have, from inspiring lectures to a friendly lab demonstrator or a helpful tutorial, providing useful advice and helping you finally understand a topic and become passionate about the subject. Meeting one of my first supervisors through a Stem Cells for Alzheimer's Disease seminar series was what put me on the path to where I am today. You, my dear listener, can be this for people as well. After all, it's more than likely that you are among the most enthusiastic and knowledgeable people when it comes to your research, and students respond really well to enthusiasm. And not only is studying the brain objectively quite cool, but dementia research is life-changing. Perhaps what I most and finally want to convey, though, is that teaching doesn't have to be a burden or a necessity, something you have to put up with or get something out of. Teaching can just be joyful in itself. All researchers understand the thrill of discovery, and there's a similar wonder to being able to help and watch others learn and understand things for the first time themselves, to discover things for the first time. I've always enjoyed the, oh, like, moment of breakthrough dawning comprehension myself, but seeing it in the face of others and knowing that you help put it there is something else. Watching students grow and develop into better and more confident thinkers and scientists gives a meaning and a purpose to teaching that can sometimes be a bit less frequent in the lab. And indeed, students can bring a fresh art enthusiasm that reminds us after a day of Western blotting and Excel plotting that hey, actually neuroscience is pretty cool. In sum, yes, teaching is time out of your research, and it's not all sunshine and roses, and it can certainly be daunting, but it's time returned in spades. It will build your confidence, your communication skills, and your connections. It helps develop empathy, can give you new ideas, and can give you a break from the lab. But most importantly, it is essential for bringing along a new generation of researchers. It brings a more diverse sense of meaning and achievement when experiments or applications bring you down. And finally, it's just fun and you should definitely give it a go. Thank you for listening. Join the Dementia Research bloggers and share your own views.